Hey traders, this is T Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat. I'm one of the top mentors and moderators in chat. As a special gift to our viewers on YouTube, we have created a free two hour course to help teach you how to start a consistently profitable trading business and identify high paying setups in just 30 days. There will be limited seating every week, so register for the course and reserve your spot now using the link in the description. As a special bonus for everyone that watches the entire video, we will give you the link to a free 10 hour additional mini course that has never been released to the public. Register now before all slots completely fill up. All right, we are officially here for week 14 of the new member T Bradley 90, uh, Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Q&A. Uh, let's do this for about an hour, guys. I wanna rant, got a lot of stuff to talk about. This is a freaking hot ass market. I wanna talk about hard stops, I wanna talk about price action, I wanna talk about fantasy orders, trends, backside, frontside, lines, halts, uh, just whatever it is, man, let's really go through this. So first things first, let me get to your questions and then, uh, and then I can rant. But uh, let, so anybody that has any questions, so any member that is in chat and has questions, post them right here. For anybody that is a non-member, you are just going to have to become a member to ask questions uh, and you won't regret it, guys. So I can, I can definitely promise you that. And at the very least, man, for the guys that are super skeptical about becoming a member, dude, join a month and see if it's for you, man. I mean, again, you're never going to know until you try. Uh, all right, let's start. Where was the first question? Bottom fishing. I also deviated and didn't trade. Yep, scare money. Market it, market today is above my prey grade. Too crazy. Kept me from trading the low hanger plans. Okay, this is a great thing to talk about. <clears throat> Bottom fishing. You're in here a lot, buddy. What's up, man? So again, let me start by saying that you guys, as much as maybe a lot of guys don't want to admit this, this is a very hard career for people who are risk averse. And I'm not saying bottom fishing, you are. I'm just saying whether you are as a person, you need to now tailor a process or a strategy that is tailored to you on the style of risk that you like to take. Not everybody is an AT09. Alex likes to, it's not that he likes to, but he is comfortable and has done, still does sometimes, is comfortable with you know doing a lot of size or crazy size or even small size, but he's comfortable. So if you're one of those guys or girls, you know, that's a trader, you're joining the markets um, and you're just not that, you know, you're kind of risk averse and you're scared to lose money. You are in a career that where you gamble money for a living. You know, as many, as much as people don't want to tell you, you know, oh, we're not gamblers, blah, blah, blah. That's bullshit. We're totally gamblers, but we're professional gamblers, like professional poker players. And in the sense that we're so educated in our educated risk that we are waiting for 21 blackjack hands and willing to take that bet if the cards, you know, the proverbial cards, quote unquote, show up on the table. So again, guys, it's not that you got to, you know, hit every chart, right? So these were the six stocks that I was watching today, and there were many more, but these, you know, there were tons of low hangers in day twos. But here's the problem. A lot of traders, and specifically risk averse traders, want to do a little in this and a little in this and a little in this, a little in this, all of these, when really, if you guys, and I'm literally speaking to the most risk averse people, you need to wait for the most opportune setup. So what's an opportune setup? This level right here, right? This area, this area. So I, the only trade I really took today was TRPX. And shoot, I'm, I'm actually, shit, I should have saved my freaking chart. God dang it. Um, well, I totally flubbed it, but I didn't do a great job. I shorted TRPX today right here. Um, how long would it take me to go get my chart? It'd probably take a little while. I'm in a totally different room on a different computer. Uh, but what I did was I shorted this stock right here today and I literally covered like right here. It was so lame. Like it took forever. I usually don't hold these after the first half an hour, hour. Uh, I couldn't get locates on BNGO or, uh, IPWR, which I wanted so badly. And, uh, I don't trade XBIO because this fucker is just a nightmare every time it shows up. So um, and I couldn't get DTSS either. I think I woke up a little too late for these. So again, you're not going to always have shares, which is okay. But again, you know, play what you know, but back to risk averse. If you guys are a risk averse trader, what you need is much outer lines. So while traders in this hugely bullish market, we're hitting inner lines and this and this, I'm like, dude, you can't do that because here's what's happening. 
I usually like to hit a red to green line, right? Like down here in this area right here um, on something like a low hanger. But guys, things are ripping up, zombieing back, coming back farther and stronger than you can ever imagine. You need to wait for these setups. So I, I literally wrote this. These are not lines that I put in now. I wrote these last night before bed. Uh, every single night on, um, well, every single night before the next trading day, I'm looking at the day one, you know, stocks that tanked, the ones that got beaten down, and I'm looking for a relief pop into day two for where I want to hit, and these were my lines. So this was the area I was willing to scale. Again, I think my first order was close to the top. I hit right here. I barely covered for this. I'm not even going to make myself sound like I killed it today. I did not. Uh, it was a very slow day for me, in fact, due to no locates, which was so frustrating because I probably would have nailed a couple of these. But um, suffice it to say, play what the market gives you. But for the risk averse traders, this is a perfect area to scale. This is outer lines. This is a perfect area for DTSS. There are resistance points on the way up here, but where is the most of the volume and consolidation that needs to come out? Right there. Does that make sense? This little pocket of volume and consolidation, this is where you want to start in. So if you literally started exactly where that is, you would have probably got just a starter in here, but that's the safe play you know, this area. So that's the safe play. So guys that were shorting down here, down here, down here, and specifically if the risk averse to even get in the stock, you need to give yourself the 21 blackjack hand or the 20s, you know, the double kings, the two tens, whatever it is. And uh, you need to, you need to wait for this. So again, I make very clear in trading that it's once you have a process, it is never about changing your process due to market conditions. So coming out of a very bear market, we now came into a very bull market. What that means is it's not that you're changing your process, but you are changing your discipline. So while in, you know, for the last couple months, you were able to get away with an entry down here, you know, the red to green levels, or maybe risking pre-market highs, you can't in this market. You just cannot. Look at these comebacks. Look at these runs. Look at these zombies. Look, this is insane. So you need to wait for these outer levels, and that's exactly what we teach at MIC. These are outer areas of interest. This is the 2020 blackjack hand. This is, you know, this is hitting on a 17 hand or a 16 and hoping for a three and a four and a five. Like it's just not going to work, guys. And fun fact: me and Alex, we're Alex and I were just in Vegas, and he was like, "Come on, Tosh, let's go lose some money." So he had a hundred dollars to lose at the blackjack hands. And where do we go, Alex? If you're still in here. Uh, we went to the Blackjacks. Dude, the minimum uh, bet-in that they had at our tables were $15, the minimum. We were in, like, a really high-stakes place, um, speaking of which, because, like, we were in, like, penthouses and stuff. So they didn't have, like, $5 buy-ins. It was, like, 15 per Blackjack hand. And Alex, like, literally drowned his, you know, quote-unquote account, that $100 really quickly, brought it back up to, like, 150 all-time highs, and then we bled it all the way back down. But again, guys, when, you know, there's a, there's a science to these things. So while there, yes, there's a science to blackjack, which we're not as familiar with as trading, uh, there is a familiarity in trading and how to manage that. So you guys just need to understand how this language kind of works. All right, let's go to the next question while my dog, I had to let my dog in. All right, let's see. Or he's just going to scratch the door the whole time. All right, let's see. Let's see. Um, do, do, OCOs for the win. Yeah, Arvin, nice. Use those, buddy. They're great. Uh, webinar, I told you that. This will be uploaded either tomorrow uh, or the next day, guys. So give some time for that. But this is recorded, uh, and it will be uploaded. So any of your questions, you'll be able, if you have to miss for work right now, by all means, go to work, guys. You can watch this later. Uh, how much percentage of your max size do you put as a fantasy order on low hangers? This is a great question. This is a, this is a really good question. So a lot of members do not necessarily uh, get full size on. And I get this, this, uh, this DM a lot. Hey, Tosh, you know, I'm never able to get full size on, on my fantasy orders or winners, right? You need to see how fantasy or how fantasy the order is, right? Like how fantasy order ish is it? And that's where I start to put on size. So if this is my scale zone guys, right? This is a long journey off lows, right? If this gaps up a little bit and it goes into this area, what I'm going to do is I'm usually going to hit a quarter. So let me draw this out. I usually do something like this. I only got on a quarter today. I really did because I am always willing to go smaller and not fuck over my plan versus going all in one pop shop here, and then I'm nervous if it gets to the top of my scale area and I don't have plans to add. 
So this is how I do it every time, man. Oh, sorry. Why is this not? One sec, guys, this is acting a little weird. I'm trying to duplicate this. What the hell? Oh, they don't let you do that anymore? Did they have an update? Oh, that's so lame. So you, you used to be able to just hit the space bar. What the hell? I usually scale like this, guys. I want the whole area. If it's shaded, it's shaded for a reason. Does that make sense? When you have a plan, you need to stick to your plan. So uh, who asked the question? Um, Alpine, what's up, buddy? So if this is my scale area, I will most likely have full size at the top because I'm giving myself the entire top. Again, how is Bao so consistent all the time? He's giving himself a range to scale and he's not deviating from his plan. If it is within his range to scale, he is going to have bullets to scale that range. So if you are the guy going all in, so this is your area of scale and you're going full size right here, Dude, you're going to be fucking scared when it goes to three, when it goes to 302, when it goes, and you may cut it. That's the point. This is, this is in my scale zone. So I'm scaling this fucking thing, you know, make, whether it's, and sometimes I piece it out. Sometimes there's eight orders in here. Sometimes there's three, but I, if it makes it to the top, I most likely have full size on. So you have to account for that. Um, uh, and that might be a quarter, you know, the first one like this, I might get it right here and that might be a quarter or this might be a half. Oh, nice. The space bar's working. Okay, good. I must have just maxed, missed that up real quick. Uh, so, you know, it all just depends on you guys. Back tests on how you want to scale. There's many different ways to scale. Look, if this is your scale zone and you literally want to be the trader that just hits full size right here, I'm not going to say don't do that. I'm not going to say don't do that. That's up to you, but you need to know how you're comfortable scaling. So if that's where you want to throw your full size, even though all this, you know, is kind of dead wood, you know, if it just makes it up to there and then you don't get it, again, it's up to you. But back test how to scale, but identify a plan, identify a process, where you usually scale, and then decide how you're going to scale. Uh, but I like the full area and I leave bullets the whole time. Uh, Arabin, what's up, buddy? I'll get to that in a second. Let me just go quickly in order. Um, bottom fishing, show me how you would draw SES plan. I had red to green but I think it was too low for the range. Uh, what up, LOL? I just want to get better. <laughs> I love that. Except, I know you know what I'm talking about here, bottom fishing. I know you know this, but you know I don't trade day threes. You know I don't. So, I don't trade this. I don't trade these. This is not my bread and butter. So, when I wait for this, I would wait for much higher. Dude, I mean, honestly, I play these safe as fuck. So, what I do, man, is like, I don't trade day threes, man. I trade day ones and day twos, and that is it. And I'm not kidding you, even in the dead market, man, if my play's not there, I trade like a retired trader. I will go do other things. I will literally find an excuse to not trade. I do not trade day threes and on. They are less, um, what, how do I even word this? They are less predictable. They can do anything. Here's the thing, here's the reason. On day twos, a lot of the selling pressure gets recycled out, and then day three is kind of a land rush. A lot of these bleed up and specifically things that have been up for a while. So when you do kind of have a supernova or black swan or whatever you want to call them, there's been a lot of terms thrown around for these, you know, one to 26, it's usually just going to keep fading back down to where it came from. But I just don't like the kind of range that these things entail or day threes. It could do anything, man. It really could. So SES today, you know, WWR, I'm not into these, man. I'm not, in, or no, I'm sorry, not WWR. What was a uh, BIMI, BIMI. That was the one. I actually want a WWR to jump higher. Day one, day two, day three. It can do anything, man. This could have gone up here. I don't know. I just like the most predictable stock. So back on SES, if I did, or if I was interested in all, I need a real dead cat bounce. I need something like up to here, a previous top. That's a top right here. This is a consolidation point. I want something like in that area. I really do. I want something like 10 to 3. I want a full on massive dead cat bounce or I'm not touching it. And I most likely wouldn't touch a day three anyways. But again, guys, again, 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 this is just my process. If, the, if you want to trade day threes or you have a bunch of statistical data, to back, that is your prerogative. And I hope you do great on it. I just, I'm going to show you my process each day and that's not it. So, you know, again, and I learned that from Bao. If he's playing a day three, he's playing much smaller size than a day one or day two because we have come to learn over years of it's just more of a land rush. It's more of a kind of like, what the fuck? Cedric, what's up? 
Hey, Tosh, any thoughts on the deep DTSS run today? Place fantasy orders. Oh, yes. Yes, I do. This was huge. I was actually trading with a friend today, uh, and I told my friend over the phone, I said, listen, this is a market where you cannot play inner lines. You absolutely will get smoked. I said, oh, 15 minute cut down. I said, why take the risk? I said, do not take the risk. So you're, you're going to trip. These lines, th I literally had these lines drawn since like this morning. I said, this is the outermost area in a bullish buy now, ask questions market that you want to hit. And literally, look at the kids. I, again, I didn't have shares, but I would have, I would have at least got a starter on this. My God, who knows if I would have piked it or not, maybe. But again, guys, we came out of a market where you were begging for even just one of these plays. Now we have fucking 10. What do you think is going to happen? Things are going to surprise the hell out of you. You cannot be hitting down here. You just can't, dude. This is too much range. So, uh, Cedric, to play safe, brother, I, uh, again, I, know, I definitely know you're new, man, because you've been hitting me up. When there's something with a massive ton of range and we're in a super, super bullish trend market, it's outer lines or nothing. It just really is, brother. So, again, man, back test the stuff. Feel what's comfortable for you. But, um, you know, something like this, man, that's what I'm doing. You know, that, that's what I'm doing. Oh, shit, I had it right here. What was, what was right here? I can't remember the ticker that was right there. Shit. <laughs> Whatever. I'll find it later. Oh, was it TRPX? TRPX. You. Yeah, so, you know, outer lines, outer lines. This was the area of volume that I thought would come down because this was too flat line. These were the tops. Again, top, topping action, top right there, top from pre-market. So I'm hitting that area. That's where I'm interested in. Uh, where are the tops, right? And again, this was the most tops and this is the most consolidation, things like that. Uh, were you planning on trading XBIO today? If so, what was your plan? If you don't mind sharing, what's up, Mize? Uh, absolutely, but on only one condition. So I know the history of this ticker. This is a fucker. This ticker is like the two-year-old, you know, kid that won't stop asking questions. The terrible twos. This is this. Every time this stock runs, and dude, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back. Literally, check this out. I literally wrote it timestamp. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, where did I write it? I gotta find. I'm serious, guys. You just start remembering how tickers trade. I'm telling you. Um, so every time XBIO runs, for some reason, I don't know who's behind this company, but it just careens off lows and zombies back, or teleports back, or rip short space every time it runs. I mean, I'm always prepared for it, and I literally mentioned it this morning. I want to see it. Um, I gotta find this. I seriously got to find this comment. What time am I looking at? I'm looking at five or two minutes. Was I awake? Okay, that not there. One sec. Five oh two my time. I'm Pacific Standard Time. Uh, this is why we call it patience. One sec, guys. Uh, so someone had mentioned XBIO. I think it's somewhere around. Where is it? I know I posted it. You have 10 minutes, I think, into the open. Hold on one sec. I really want to find this comment. Hold on one sec, guys. Careful. Look, I said it's 6.46 a.m., so what is that? That's 9.46 a.m., just in the open. I said, careful on XBIO. This ticker is known for ripbacks off load. Boom. Look at this. So I did not trade this today because I knew it would pull this bullshit. Uh, I just know this ticker, man. You start to really identify with these tickers like an intimate relationship. So, Mize, to answer your question, I wanted outer lines. Where were the outer lines? Top, top, topping action mostly right here. So I wanted it minimum right there with a scale to right there. If it didn't go in this area, which probably even over VWAP, I did not touch this and I had no plan on it because I knew off lows there was danger of something like that. And I even wrote it out time stamp. So... Again, man, you just want to really pay attention to uh, fantasy orders, you know, the market that we're in. Uh, remember tickers that trade a certain way. It's never going to um, do anything but help you to know how a ticker trades. So, yeah, man, thanks. <laughs> nice call. Um, yeah, thanks for the help, guys. Uh, should be after some whatever you said. Close. <laughs> yes, I did. Thanks, guys, for paying attention. I, God, I hope that saved somebody today. Uh, Aravin, I think I missed it. Hold on. I think I missed a couple. Uh, Jim, I had to be on vacation this week, so don't get to normally trade most of the day. 
what would you look for as a trader? You can normally only trade the last 30 minutes to one hour of each trading day. Yeah, that's tough, Jim. That's really tough. I don't trade the last hour because I'm a short bias trader. But if I were to say the best, oh God, this is a tough one, man, because you really don't want to short the last half an hour or hour because of you know the chance of something walking up after hours or gapping up the next day. And even if you have a good average, you know, you can gap up the next day because it's the last half hour. How much more can you make? Um, unless it's a death line play for short. Uh, the only play I would go into in the last half hour is a stock that is super strong like this. A stock just making new highs into the close. You know, right now this is so unbelievably bullish. OCGN, I, I don't know what the fundamentals are, guys, so don't quote me on this. I don't know if they have any dilution or not. I didn't have time to look today. I really don't know what the fundies are on this, but if this didn't have a ton of dilution, this has a serious chance for a gap up tomorrow. Higher lows, higher lows, being bought up off dips, new highs all day. These are the strong stocks that get, get stronger and sometimes gap up overnight. So, you know, I'd say the long side, uh, if you had to swing, again, I don't like longing these stocks. Oops, did I? I don't like longing these stocks, um, small caps, but that is most likely, I think, the safest play possible for the last 30 minutes and or swinging over into the next day, specifically, and if it's probably a micro with no dilution, because this could just rip up on air after hours and, and gap up tomorrow and just be, you know, a hell of a move. So you got to be careful. You got to be careful. But you don't want to, you don't want to swing long something like this in the close. My God, like this is at lows, right? You want strong stocks get stronger and weak stocks get weaker. So I was so bummed I didn't have shares of this today because my bread and butter, death candle through VWAP, I wanted to short right here but I had no shares the, with the BWAP pushback. That's what I always do. I kind of, I think I made that play a little famous with an MIC, the death candle through BWAP, the first death candle, uh, the pushback to BWAP and then hold the core. But here's the thing, you know, something like this, if I have a really good average right here, I'm going to swing a piece because even if this gaps up to fucking four, I'm in no danger. Okay. So I break even if it gaps up and rips against me. See what I'm saying? That's the key to swinging. You only want to swing if you have a really good average, so ideally, if you're swinging the last half an hour, I mean, it's hard because you're limited to coming in the last half an hour, but if you had a really good average from say 218 and it's trading at 260, you know, you have really good odds of, even if you gap down, you're still kind of safe. So again, man, just feel it out, but back test, back test, back test. Uh, Arabin, Tosh, sorry if you mentioned this earlier, but is your scale zone uh, defined by your outer lines? What would be the inner lines in this chart? So they're all different, Arabin, they're all different. So let me show you the difference between TRPX and something like XBIO. Uh, so I like to go where the previous tops are, right? Like I look, I like to look where the previous top. Oh, uh, oh, DTSS. Okay, let's go to that. Um, so I like outer outer lines. When something has no range, like TRPX, this is no range. That's a big move. So I'm. These are. I wouldn't say these are inner lines, like this had a gap up, right? So if it just opened right here, these would technically be inner lines, right? These would be inner lines, like right here and right here would be like an inner line. These were technically outer lines because this is a stock that just didn't have much range to begin with. And if you really wanted to go outer, you could do like, you could literally go like where the, almost the consolidation points are, like right here, right? Like the bottom base of this kind of topping action. You could have literally just hit right here and got a starter in. This is the safest move, right? But there's, but this has a ton of range, bro. DTSS has so much range, and it didn't get its ass whooped from day one. Sure, it it it, it got it got whooped, but not smoked. So if this would have ended like down here, no longs would have been in control, and this only would have popped a little bit. But this kind of closed mid range. Um, it's got a ton of range, and stocks I've just come to understand over the years that have a ton of range have a chance to really get skipped up on like a pumper or something. And we all know the pumper that was behind this today. Uh, of course, I'm not going to mention his name, but uh, there was a pumper in here, you know, that pumped this up today. So again, man, I like outer lines and this is where I'm looking to scale anywhere from inside this line to the maximum of this. If it goes over, that's where I cut it. So if that was your question, I, you know, anything, Oh, sorry. Hold on one sec. Uh, anything over this line, I don't want it anymore. I really don't because that's what I was willing to risk. So that's where a hard stop would be. Does that make sense? I, I, I hope that answered your question, man. Do you want me to be more clear? Did that, did that answer your question? This has less range 
So I'm willing to hit a little bit more of an inner line, even though the, this was kind of technically an outer line because it really just doesn't have much range. But because this had a ton of range and we're in a Super Bowl market, I need to wait for the absolute outer, outer, outer. Uh, would you use outer lines to scale only or would you use uh, that to channel trade? I, uh, I'm not a channel trader, man. I mean, it depends on who you ask. You know, Bao will, you know, wait for a top and then hit this pop right here because this is a resistance point or hit this one because this is a previous resistance point or hit this one because this is a previous resistance point and they're all kind of within the same channel and then he cut if it went over this one. So I'm not the guy making micro moves and micro moves and micro moves. I'm the guy who likes to get a really good average and then ideally, ideally have, you know, shorts right here. Ideally, like that is my starter. And then I like to piecemeal out. So piecemeal, 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 and then maybe even swing if I really, really have some confidence or conviction. So again, it just depends on who you ask, brother, but I like to go in once and come out many times. Well, go in once, I mean, just like maybe in, 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 but basically one general area while you've seen Bow's charts, while he's, you know, look, he's in here, he's got arrows here, he's chasing it down, he's got arrows here, he's got, and he's taking advantage of a ton of moves because he's playing, um, you know, he's playing the little washes, the little covers. I, I, I just do, I try for much bigger moves. Uh, so you have to decide who you are as a trader and if that's going to work for you. A lot of traders who I've taught, you know, personally trade like me. Uh, while a lot of traders, you know, trade like Bao because that's their more their style. Again, if you make two thousand dollars in the morning, dude, you can still make another two thousand dollars in between this, 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 and this. It's just not like comfort zone. But if that's what you want to do, dude, you just back test that and really get good at that. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Look at XBIO, dude. Every time this runs, this stock squeezes shorts like it's short, short crowded. And then it goes long crowded and then just fucks over longs. I hate this ticker. This is like, I, I, I can't stand the animal cats. Like I really don't like cats. And I feel like this is just like that cat. It's like you're, you're petting it, you're petting it and then scratch your fucking hand and face out of nowhere. And then you're like, oh man, fuck this cat. And then it loves on you again. And then you're like, what the fuck, dude? I hate cats, dude. I hate cats. <laughs> this is the cat of the stock market. <laughs> this is the dog. You get it a good average and then it just does whatever you want the rest of the day. It's like there to please you. Like dogs are so amazing. <laughs> this is the flying wombat. Yeah, dude, for real. <laughs> this is the flying fucking wombat, man. This is the porcupine, dude. Uh, what skills do you get or got when using TOS on demand for backtesting because you know what day's outcome you backtest? Oh, yeah, dude, Paul. You just asked the number one question for backtesting on Thinkorswim On Demand, and here's what you do. Here's what you do, pal. Guys, if you want to really get good at backtesting, this is what you do. Thank you, Ervin. I'm glad I, I was clear on that. Uh, you want to not, well, you can ruin it for yourself by screenshotting the full chart, screenshot the NGO, screenshot XBIO, put them in a fucking folder, and then say, hey, I've got the date, I've got the chart up, or guys, what you can do is screenshot, you're gonna do this, I'm telling you right now, I'm giving the secret sauce to back to say, I did this for years, it's why I understand price action. Screenshot XBIO and right here. Now, let's close this, check this out. Now you're gonna create a folder of this. Look at that. Now I have the, the ticker symbol and the date. Does this make sense? Pay very close attention. Now, you're gonna go into Thinkorswim, and when you click on demand, let's do it for a second. Click on demand, now we're on random fucking dates. You are going to go whatever date it was, let's just say, I'm just gonna pull a random ticker out of my ass, guys, we'll say WM, right? Or, or NVIDIA, NVIDIA is, everybody knows NVIDIA. Whatever this did, I don't want to know what it did during the day. So you are going to set it in pre-market. Does this make sense? You are going to play it from the pre-market. I don't remember when you save hundreds of charts from years, you go, you play, you know, fucking tail on the donkey. You put the pinata, up. you blindfold yourself, point to a random one, open it up pre-market and you don't remember what happened. And if you've got a photographic fucking memory, then you totally might remember what happened. But my point is you save hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of charts, put them in a folder, bundle them all up, look at the date, import the date, put yourself pre-market and off to the races. Act as if it's brand new. I did this for years and I learned price action because I was like, man, 
I don't remember shit of what happened on this run. <laughs> so it's like it's live again. Uh, but you have to have levels to trade from the past. Why? Why? Backtest, play it out. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, you look, here's the thing. So, Paul, if you don't want to play it from pre market, then screenshot the chart as well and then look at those levels and then just watch it as you go. Again, it's not necessarily, bad testing is not necessarily trading. A lot of it's just screen time and saying, okay, this ran like this. Why did it break down? Why did it break out at this level? Slow down the tape, you know, record your screens, not on TOS, my God. Record your screens on DOS, get the real tape like I have on my other computer. And, um, cause I do these on a Mac and then, and then watch that back in slow motion. Those are the way, man. That's how you learn tape, and this is how you learn charting. This is the best way possible, brother. Uh, you. Oh, Vanessa, what's up? One of our new members. We got a lady in the room, guys. I better watch my language. We don't have many lady traders. It's nice to have Vanessa in here. This, this industry is too many dudes. Um, on low hangers, if you manage to get a partial position with the fantasy orders, do you add more after it turns and looks to backside? Great, absolute fantastic question, and no, I do not, Vanessa. I used to, I personally used to, I know a lot of traders that do. You are more than welcome as some work out. As you can see, if this was your starter, say this was your starter on DTSS right here, if you wanted to, you could have chased this down and, and set hard stops on the way. I do not. I try to get my full size where my fantasy scale zone is and then I piece out the rest of the day. So I per, while I personally do not, a lot of traders do and you can, and you can do that. You can absolutely do that. Uh, how do you copy a drawing? Like all you do is you, you highlight it, buddy, you click on it and then click the space bar and then literally drag it over. Boom, space bar, space bar, space bar, space bar. See that? So it's, uh, it's really easy. Thinkorswim is just such an amazing platform. It's so freaking easy and hands-on, man. See, he's putting in a lower high, but again, I'm not interested in any of this until under two. Under two is uh, the start of backside, the whole number, psychological price target, as even these people still won't be underwater, but there will be a lot of underwater from up here. So again, man, like these are not areas to rush into, man. Would you say it's not smart to try to get full size in the initial push on day one low hangers, uh, breaking down pre-market? Well, I mean, it just depends on who you ask, guys. Is, uh, that's my number one strategy. I like to get full size on these. So if this wasn't XBIO, Actually, even if it was, I might've gotten full size if it reached my levels, right? Like I said, I wanted, I wanted up here. I may have gotten full size. So again, it's just if you're comfortable with that, but full size is more of a death line play, right? That's more of a, you know, XBIO. It's more of a, hey, it breaks 133. And now let me, let me throw on some size because now it's guaranteed, right? So while this has pre-market overhead, if it makes all the way up to here, it's still kind of a front side move within backside. So again, you know, this is when the plays get really weak. You can throw a full size here and then ride that down. So again, man, it's just how you want to play. But I don't like hitting full size on death lines. I like hitting more full size into scales on the way up when backside is already in. On fantasy orders, fantasy lines. Hope that's clear. <clears throat> Got a lot of people in here today, man. Glad to have you guys. Yep. Yeah. Any, oh, so hard stops, guys. I, I, I kind of rant on this every week. Uh, if I did not today, let me introduce why this is so important. So you are a trader who's using mental stops and you don't know how XBIO trades. So you hit death line right here, boom, right? You hit death line and you go, okay, I'm gonna give myself a mental stop right here. If it breaks this kind of topping action, the death line, if it breaks this level, I'm going to put a mental stop and I'm gonna get out. But here's the problem. And this is why you need market hard stops to your guaranteed fill. Yes, you might incorporate some slippage, but this is why you need them in your trading. Because boom, what did XBIO do? Not only did it rock it up, that might put a lot of new traders in a comatose state. It might put them in a shell shock, kind of deer in the headlight state, in which case, now you're not going to respect your mental stop. And then now, oh, it's coming back down. It's coming back down. I'm going to mental stop if it, if it goes back over this. And now you're giving yourself more room. And then boom, it goes through. And you're like, okay, maybe just a little bit more. Maybe just, and then boom, you're dead. So had you just done a hard stop in which it's automated and the machine gets you out right here, not yourself, not fear or 
chance of getting deer in the headlights moment, this is where you're going to get out somewhere within here and it's going to guarantee you out and you can save yourself all this freaking headache. So guys, hard stops, if you're not using them, you are doing yourself the biggest disservice to your trading, your hard earned money, have a good relationship with your money, don't want to lose that shit, maximize, um, that's the point. So, but I will say, don't, it's not that you should trade scared. You, you, no one makes money trading scared, guys. You just trade and protect yourself. There's a big difference. Trading scared is trading scared, and most people don't make money trading scared. But if you trade with risk management in check, you're trading smart. There's a difference between trading scared and trading smart. And most importantly, people who trade scared don't make money. Are you trading scared or, you know, or are you like, okay, so there's traders who trade to win or trading not to lose. Trading not to lose is trading scared and you'll never have a career in this industry. So what is trading trading um, not to lose? Okay, like I'll scale this, I'll scale this, but I'm scared as hell and I'll readjust my plan. No, Tr that's trading not to lose. Trading to win is saying, this is my scale zone, I'm scaling in here, I'm putting a hard stop right there for protection and that's my plan, no deviation, boom, let's follow plan. Vice versa with any of these, that's trading to win. Preset plan, preset process, follow your shit. Trading not to lose is trading scared. Uh, determine your risk, it either works or it doesn't. Exactly, and then next trade. Dude, very well said, fine, very well said. Trade your plan, trade your process, and then if it doesn't work, don't beat yourself up, you follow your plan, on to the next trade. Not every trade is going to work out, guys, I promise you, you gotta understand we're professional gamblers. There, even if you have a 2020 blackjack hand, every now and then the dealer is going to get the ace and the king, baby. And you're going to look at your chips and say, motherfucker. And you're going to say, why did I size? Because every time we lose, we're sized too much in. And every time we win, we're not sized in enough. Welcome to the headbanger of this industry and this job. It's a nightmare sometimes. <laughs> but it's also fun as hell at the same time. So, uh, Oh, dude, I haven't I, I was actually prepping for the webinar. I didn't see one. I didn't see end of it all today. I didn't pull the stock up one time. Somebody said it was moving on news. Oh shit! I didn't see this at all, dude. This is the first I'm looking at this chart. Damn! What they get? Uh, intraday news? What the fuck? Cryptic tweet. What is this? New Age Beverages shares were up 23% on an, uh, Wednesday afternoon after the company issued a cryptic tweet from its official Twitter account involving Nestle's tea. Oh, so there's the countdown is, oh, so they're, so really, oh my God, are you freaking kidding me? This stock is up on nothing. This stock is up on a company saying, hey, we got some big things in the works, trust us. Yeah, you dumb fucks. It might be poo poo drink with poo poo CBD, who knows? And it gets everybody sick with a bowl of poisoning. Who knows, man, this is terrible fucking news. This is just saying, hey, we got something in the works and all these dumbasses bought all this stuff. And here's the thing. When there's not a real catalyst, what do you think price action is gonna do? It's going to return to its natural habitat <laughs> because this, do this doesn't deserve this move. So it's coming back. So, you know, under VWAP, a death land on under VWAP, maybe I would have chased a little bit of this breaking this level. But again, that's kind of hard. That's kind of hard because, again, we're in a market where people are just buying shit blind. But that's, that's not news. Um, so, yeah, my thoughts right now are this could really go back down here. It literally could. But, again, I'm not chasing in this market as things are ripping back. And I just – I don't like anything that's just intraday news. I just never have. I like things where it bases off pre-market volume, pre-market levels. It's conformed to the chart. You know, NBEV is a sector play. I don't like sector plays, you know. CBD and the cryptic shit. I'm not into it. Uh, you use DOS for level two and two. Yes, yes, I do, Jim. So I, uh, um, I'm in another room right now currently for quiet, so I'm not interrupted, even though my dog completely interrupted me. But uh, my other computer in the other room and many computers or monitors is full of DOS charting with level two. This is literally just thinkorswim charting uh, for lines and how easy it is to use in fantasy orders. I mean, it's just cool. You know, you can't really do this in DOS. Dot, this is shaded, you can draw lines really quick, you can draw like okay, shaded areas, like whatever you want, man. It's just really, it's really easy and cool. Uh, I love TOS. I, I, as much as I wanna just use one platform, it's very hard for me to. And I think the reason why I still use them is because I still love Macs. I, I'm still a Mac guy at heart and I do these web, I know how to use Macs like the back of my hand, so I do these for the webinars or 
or I, they're just easy to use. Like I write all my documents on here or PowerPoints and stuff. I only use PCs for trading, like literally only for fucking trading. That's it. Um, nothing else. I barely even know how to run a PC outside of open up Cobra, get my shares, and then put my triangles. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Any last questions, guys, before I wrap this up? Because holy shit, I'm winded. <laughs> if your broker doesn't let you scale, would you most likely use outer lines to enter and just risk miss? Yeah, great, great question, man. So TRPX earlier, like I said, if you don't have a brokerage where you can scale, if this is the scale zone you guys are interested in, hit the top of it, hit the top half. If you can't scale, that's the safest play. That's the safest play. But not being able to scale makes this job very hard. Trading is, is very simple, but it's not easy. Let me tell you. It's very simple. It's not easy at all. <laughs> yeah, it makes it easier, man. I'm telling you. Or it makes it harder. You know, it makes it, it makes it easier if you wait for these perfect levels, but it makes it very hard uh, if you cannot scale. So, you know, like I said, you know, if you can't scale, you better be sure you're hitting this area, not these. And it also depends on the market sentiment. The market sentiment is crazy. We need an MIC anthem. <laughs> Great webinar. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, I hope I got to your questions today, guys. Like, in, in this market, man, you, thanks, Jim. You guys, look, man, I, I'm a short seller who usually gets in and tries to hold all day. Guys, it's just not working right now. So things are zombieing back. People are buying shit up with their eyes closed, blindfolded. Uh, thanks, Cedric that you guys just need to be careful. So please, please, please use hard stops. If you're not using hard stops, you need to. You need to respect trend. This is so front side. You know, why look for a short in something like this, man, on, on this big ass move? Like maybe here, cause it's backside and these are outer lines and you could have got a move there. You totally could have got a move there, but just be safe, man. That's all I'm saying, follow trend. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, Mize. Dude, love it. Hey, thanks, Vanessa. Uh, I'm so glad you guys get a lot of value out of these, man. I'll keep doing these. Again, uh, I only want to keep doing these if you guys do and really do enjoy them. And for anybody that's not a member, guys, you know, if you learned anything from today's webinar, my God, think about how much you'll learn. If you have a 600 video library, you have about 16 years of experience teaching you daily calls, um, whatever it is, guys, we got a ton of stuff for you. So back to my little PowerPoint. Uh, yeah, no brainer. Thanks, guys. Alpine bottom fishing. Thank you. Thanks for showing up. So check this guys. Here's how to contact us. Um, really quick. If you want to get on the phone with me after this webinar, reserve your spot. We can, uh, non-members, uh, sign up, go to alexsmiz.co, uh, watch the webinar, um, and then sign up after you can get on a call with me. We can talk about your needs at MIC, uh, what the payment, you know, option is best for you. If you want to come annual lifetime, monthly, whatever it is, uh, I'll take care of you and make sure you get started the right way, walk you through the video library, just kind of give you a really quick five minute in-depth tutorial of MIC and how to contact everything. Here's how, how to contact guys, any upgrades, any signups, reach out to me, Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. I will help you out. Um, Twitter, my investing club, Instagram, my investing club, uh, Alex, these are his handles for, um, Instagram and Twitter, Instagram for bow. They're both the same modern rock, Alex underscore Tamiz. 809 trader for um, Twitter. Uh, mine is T Bradley 90 for Twitter and T Bradley 90s underscore trader for Instagram. Schedule a call with us today, guys. Go to these links, alexdemiz.co. If you're a non member, sign up. You won't regret it. Give us a month. Give us a month and see if it works for you. And I will end with that. Tom, what's up? Love seeing the familiar faces in here, guys. Thanks for showing up, man. I. Guys, if you're still learning after all these weeks of showing up, I love it, man. I'll just I'll try to hit some new, uh, I hope I hope you guys learn something new each time and I can keep showing just what I'm thinking or what I'm looking at or things I did right or wrong or I'm sure we can find at least one gold nugget in each of these each week. <laughs> Thanks, guys. There have been my, see you guys. Thank you. Hey, traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. 
I will get back to you in a timely manner. And I'm saying this because I'm here to help and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right. See you guys.